Hi, this is Kathy Skipper from Aromanosis. I think I'm going to do a short series of videos on learning how to smell. And I'm going to concentrate on learning how to smell in the way that is useful for deep inner healing and journeying. So when you're using aromas as guides and allies for the unconscious realms and for learning more about yourself through your relationship with these aromatic substances, that's the type of smell or way of smelling that I'm interested in. And I am very aware that there are other ways of smelling that are all equally great, but have different functions. For example, the one that comes to mind is that I used to be a winemaker um, when I was living in France. And when we did a wine tasting, we would uh, smell the wine. First, we would look at the colour and then you'd smell the wine before tasting it. And um, the aim of that was really to identify the aromas in each individual wine, to be able to name them, to be able to really dig deep into what different aromas was the wine emitting. And that's great, but it doesn't help. That type of smelling doesn't help when you want to use aromas for inner journeying, for partnering with the aromas to navigate parts of yourself that are less accessible, usually. Um, the unconscious, the shadow aspects of the self. When we partner with an aroma, with the right aroma, an aroma that's still live, full of viridatus, then the aroma guides us and takes us to places within ourself that, as I said, are less easily accessible when we're in our day-to-day -day lives. And when you're smelling an oil with the left brain, like the winemakers do, you know, trying to identify what is this smell, how am I going to name it, um, then the left, there's a sort of amount of analyzing and judging and not judging in the bad way, but, you know, weighing things up, comparing what does, does it smell like this? Does it smell like ripe cherries or does it smell like pear tree blossom? And that's great and important, but it's not helpful with the type of smelling that we do when we're working with oils as guides and allies. And that's because the left part of the brain, the analytical part of the brain, the intellectual, mental aspect of the brain, sort of when it wants to understand something, it comes in and dominates and acts as a door, closing the opening that we're looking for when we want to use these um, aromas for journeying and for, as I said, um, partnering with to under understand ourselves more and access more of ourselves. So I think the best way to begin with is um, I could lead you through a sort of little short journey with an oil to show you how what I'm talking about and how we teach people to smell oils. And this probably won't be the only video, so try to make it not too long and I'll come back and um, add some more about this way of smelling in a future video. So I've got cypress oil and I love this oil and it's a good one for this because it has, you know, it's a tree and it has very many aspects to it. So I've got some oil on a stick, a, a scent stick. You could just smell straight from the bottle. No need to apply it or anything. All you need is those light aromatic molecules to reach your olfactory system. So the first thing that is important when learning how to smell and really entering into connection with these aromatic molecules is to make sure that you're not going to be disrupted, you've got a nice safe space and you can relax. You can actually switch off that part of the mind that is usually very busy thinking um, and working things out and deciding. That part of the mind isn't useful at the moment. It can be useful afterwards when we want to note down and and look at what the journey was about but beforehand it's not useful so get comfy get your oil you can pause the video and then come back once you've got an oil and get nice and comfy and a good way of getting comfy and switching off the analytical part of the mind is to notice your breath And as you notice your breath, you might want to take a couple of falling out breaths so that the, your breathing takes on a more relaxed, slower, deeper rhythm to it. So take a, just a couple of breaths to... And as you do that, you drop out of your 
thinking mind and notice, bring your attention to the breath, first of all. Without even really thinking, no thinking about the oil, you're just getting into a relaxed state. The oil is accompanying you, but without any necessary attention on the oil at the moment. And when you're ready, bring your attention from the breath even deeper down into, if you're a woman, into your pelvic area. And if you're a man, into the sort of hara, the centre of your being. And that's the place where the attention should begin. So you're sort of nestled in yourself. You're not thinking about what's going on on the outside. You're not worried about what you have to do. You're nestled deep in yourself. So my advice would be when you're practicing this is to take a bit of time so you do get into that feeling of belonging inside yourself. What does it feel like? Notice what does it feel like to, to, to habit yourself, to live in yourself. Notice how things start to quieten down. And the first key to learning how to smell and journey with oils is to imagine yourself as a vessel. So in a way, you're getting out of your own way. You're not thinking about the oil. You're not expecting anything particular from the oil. You're opening yourself as if you were a cauldron or a beautiful vessel. And so the oil can enter through your olfactory system into your organism, into your being, and you receive it like a vessel receives water that's being poured into it. Nothing to do, nothing to change, nothing to think about, nothing to decide, just allow the aromatic molecules to make their way into your organism, which is a vessel, a receiving vessel. You're receiving. Like any communication with any other human or animal or being, we can't decide what the communication is going to be like and what what we want it to be like or how we expect it to be like. We just have to open to it. And that's the same when smelling an oil for this type of work. So open yourself to the oil. Put a little bit more on. And as you do that, just notice. That's all you have to do. Notice. And I invite you first to notice how the oil circulates in your physical body. How do you notice your physical body reacting to the oil and the oil reacting to your physical body? How does the oil navigate or circulate in your physical body? Can you feel its movement in your physical body? And if you can, how does the movement feel? Does it feel soft, circular, harsh, jagged, hot, cold, warm? There's no right and there's no wrong. All we're asking you to do is notice how does it feel to enter into communication with your physical body and the oil. And the minute you start thinking about it, it's difficult because smelling is about feeling. All our senses are there to give us sensory information. And sensory information is feeling. It's not thinking. The minute you think, it's very hard to feel. So by opening yourself up and just witnessing this relationship happening between the aromatic molecules and your physical being, you're noticing the feeling of having these aromatic molecules interact with your physicality. That's all. All you have to do is notice. Maybe there's some emotions that come up from the physical body, or maybe often in the way at first is that you might notice that the oil 
gets blocked somewhere. You feel a sensation somewhere in your physical body. And that's because the oil is trying to circulate the meridians or the energy pathways through your body. And when it comes up against some kind of stagnation or energetic block, it'll let you know. The aromatic molecules will let you know. You know, don't forget plants are masters of communication. And they'll always look for the easiest, smoothest way around a being. And so if they come up against a block, you'll feel it. And that's information. Nothing to do, nothing to change. Just notice. Notice how you feel as you're in your physical body as this interaction with the oil happens. How does your physical body feel? It's interesting because I can feel it in my throat chakra and I'm really working on allowing my true essence to come through and having confidence in what I say and what I write and who I am, which has been a big journey for me. Um, and I think this is a sign, you know, I can feel myself, I'm on that cusp between believing in what comes through me is the right thing and, you know, the autocritic. And I'm really making some good movement forward with this. And I think that, that the cypress in my throat chakra is, is really sort of allowing me to, to feel that. Obviously, the throat being the, 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 the communication, we get this hunch, we get this feeling of what we want to say. And in a way, it's the marriage between the feminine, which is the, and I don't mean woman, I mean the feminine, the deep instinctive desire of bringing something into the world. And then it meets with the masculine here and the masculine brings it into form, brings the words out. And that marriage is starting to happen. It's a huge journey that conjunctio, the marriage of the opposites within us. And that's really what I'm working at the moment. I'm working with the people in our mentorship on that as well. So I can really feel it here in my physical body. Okay, so notice anything and we're not going to stop there. We'll go on to two more subtle bodies just so you can see the difference. So then again, remember to breathe. The minute, the minute we stop breathing, we're also blocking things. The breath is part of this movement and the, the oil will sense the breath and it allows the oil to circulate. So please remember to breathe. Drop back down into that quiet place again. And notice your emotional body. Now in drawings, you might have seen the emotional body is the second, the second most dense body apart from the physical body. And it sort of goes around in drawings. You see it around the physical body as a lighter body connected to the physical body. So tune into your emotional body, which is where the seat of your emotions. It's where emotions take seed. Yes, we feel them in the physical body, but that's because all our subtle bodies are connected to the physical body and everything ultimately comes through the physical body because we're living incarnated beings. But the subtle body, subtle emotional body is really the heart, the seed of the emotion. The emotion takes seed, it takes form here. And it, you know, you might feel it as this subtle body around your physical body, or you might feel it in a different way. There is no wrong or right. I just ask you to tune in to your emotional being, the part of yourself that is connected and takes, your emotions take root. So just allow yourself, your soul knows where it is. So allow the ar aromatic molecules once again to fill that space, to fill the emotional body. There's no wrong, there's no right. Just allow, with your intention of feeling into this emotional body, allow the aromatic molecules to circulate there. Remember to breathe. And as you breathe, notice, witness, how does it feel? How does the aromatic molecule or molecules, sorry, circulate in that part of you? How does that part of you feel? Now you're bringing your attention and the aromatic molecules to it. Isn't it amazing how much bigger we are than we think? How much more of us there is than we think? And that these parts of us can smell. It's not just the nose that smells. We have receptors for smell all over our being. 
all parts of us breathe, all parts of us smell. So just notice, notice what I can feel as the cypress makes its way through that part of myself. I feel more expansiveness. I'm, I'm way from the density that I was feeling a minute ago in the physical body and my attention is brought to this expansiveness. I notice the movement in there, the colors. And today is a good day. It feels like the energy is flowing for me in that part of myself. And there's a sense of uplift, of joy, more than what I often feel from my past life is fear or tension. But here, you know, things are moving forward. Like I said, with the communication and here again, it's a good day for me and I can feel this uplifting, joyful energy in that part of myself. And if you feel something difficult or stagnant or that you feel there's a pressure in that part of yourself, just invite the oil to circulate there in that part. Nothing to do. You don't need to do anything or change anything. Just open up more, become more of a vessel for the oil to circulate in that part of yourself. And all you have to do is notice. What do you notice? Remember to breathe. Are there any emotions coming up that want your attention? Does this part of you feel that it's circulating nicely and it's expansive or is there something else going on? Just notice, nothing to change, just notice. Remember to breathe. And you may notice the interplay between the physical body where we were allowing the smell to circulate and now this emotional body. You might notice an interplay between the bo them both. Okay, and we'll do one last part of the psyche. This is by no means the whole psyche. I'll probably come back and do another video and we can carry on and look at more of the psyche in terms of how to smell with the psyche. Okay, so again, remember to breathe. And as you breathe, tune in and bring your attention to what they call the mental body. It's very airy and it's lighter than the emotional body and of course the physical body. Sometimes you see it drawn as another body around the emotional body, lighter, as I said, less dense. But again, there's no right or wrong. Just allow yourself to tune in to the part of yourself where thought, analytical thinking, intellect, mind, memory, judgment, comparison, sy sy systemic thinking, connecting the dot type of thinking. All those mind thoughts happen in this part of ourself or take seed in this part of ourself. They trigger things in the whole psyche, but they take seed here. I often feel it as a sort of pressure in my third eye. Florian, my husband, often feels it as a, a river of thoughts like flowing through. So again, no right or no wrong, just allow the molecules of the oil that you've chosen to circulate in this part of yourself and notice. Open it up and notice. Many of us spend too much time here or allow this part of ourselves to dominate. It can feel heavy, it can feel like the energy is heavy and, and doesn't flow as well. It's sort of stagnant and it should be more like air, as if the thoughts can come and go we don't have to hang on to them. We don't have to own them all. Are our thoughts really our thoughts? Where do they come from? So just allow the cypress to circulate and dance with this Aryan part of your psyche. Fill it up and notice. You might notice how it feels physically. Often I notice how it sort of translates onto the physical body. Like I said, around the third eye, the forehead. But for you, it might be different. Maybe a 
color, a shape, a feeling that's related to it. Again, no wrong, no right. Just allow. Allow yourself to notice and allow this part of you to smell the oil you've chosen. I keep having to put more oil in because there's wind and, it, and the aromatic molecules are so light. They get taken off in that direction with the wind. It's lovely, the cypress, like the branches of its tree, of its, you know, the, the tree branches of the cypress, sort of enlarging this part of myself, showing me the expansiveness and the way that it can connect to one thing and another, like branches that branch off. It's giving me a whole feeling of being like a tree reaching up high into the cosmos through this very breezy, windy part of ourselves. And I think the problem is when we don't allow the wind to blow through it, when we hang on to our thoughts, we concretize them, we give them too much energy, too much importance, instead of enjoying the other parts of ourself. So remember to breathe and just allow. What's happening for you in your mental body? What is the cypress showing you? What, what are you ready for? What's the diagnosis of this part of yourself? Is it healthy? Is it in balance with the rest of yourself? Remember to breathe. Feel the, the aromatic molecules fill and dance with this part of you. Mm. The wind is coming in Okay, so that was just a short little example of a different way of smelling and working with these beautiful aromatic volatile molecules. Um, the psyche is much bigger than we've seen today. There's other parts of the psyche and we could work on it for a long time. I think it's very, very good to work with the psyche and to realize that the anatomy of our psyche is much more than we're brought up to believe. We think we're just this physical body with some thoughts floating around and the odd emotion, um, but it's much, much, we're much more expansive. And that wholeness, learning to recognize these different parts of ourselves, is really what, for me, holistic means. And so this is, let's say, a holistic way of smelling, smelling with the whole of ourselves. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please um, sign up for our newsletter at aromanosis.com. Come over and see our oils at kathysattars.com and um, sign up as a subscriber on our channel. Lots of love.